Hi everyone, it's Monica Cardenas back with another video update and today I'm joined by Zhidong Wang, our VP of Research. And he's going to tell us a little bit about our ongoing LoGWP research program. So Zhidong, can you tell me um, when exactly the program started and why? I know it was already underway when I started at AHRI 10 years ago. Hi, uh, Monica. Yeah, first, uh, thank you for having me. Yes, and uh, the low GWP, um, the GWP uh, uh, is um, global warming potential, in short, GW we, we call it. So the low GWP refrigerant research program uh, started um, about a decade ago, I would say. At that time, uh, there was a growing concern of the negative uh, environmental impact of high GWP refrigerants being used in the field. Uh, for example, R410A is predominantly uh, used uh, in the air conditioners and the heat pumps, and it has GWP value around uh, 2,000 give, uh, give and take. So this means, uh, you know, if one pound of R410A was accidentally released to uh, uh, environment, uh, uh, it is equivalent to uh, uh, to that a uh, 2,000 pound of uh, carbon dioxide was just uh, released, which is definitely not good for our environment, right? And so at that time, and, and, and there were so many potential options when it comes to uh, the low GWP refrigerants. Uh, it's, it is really not possible uh, for a single company to evaluate them all. And it's just not an efficient way to, to use the resource. And so AHRI took the leadership role along with our members to launch a, this uh, industry-wide cooperative uh, uh, research program. We, we call it uh, Low GWP Refrigerants Evaluation uh, Program. In short, is a, a Low GWP ARAP. Uh, so the goal was really to uh, identify and uh, evaluate the promising alternative refrigerants uh, for products that AHRI members make. So this idea uh, was that you know every participating company will test the some refrigerants uh, in the products that may, they make uh, by following the same test procedure and then share the results to the public. So this way allowed our industry to, uh, to efficiently use the resource uh, to evaluate as many uh, refrigerants as possible uh, by sharing uh, some test burdens. So uh, yeah, that's how it started. Yeah. Great, thank you. And what were the key takeaways then from that long-term research program? Well, so the entire program uh, went on about five years. Uh, you know, it was, highly supported by, uh, by the industry, by our members. Uh, we, uh, we assessed uh, more than uh, 60 uh, low GWP uh, refrigerant options and produced uh, uh, around 70 test reports in the public domain. And the testing uh, uh, was carried out by uh, manufacturers and uh, by uh, university and uh, national labs. And the products, um, uh, covered, I don't, uh, yeah, covered air conditioners, heat pumps, uh, rooftop units, and chillers, commercial refrigeration products, um, as well as um, uh, compressors and so on. So uh, there are a lot of um, um, uh, testing and several uh, several new refrigerants that you uh, often hear uh, nowadays were actually identified and evaluated back then. Uh, in, in that program. So at the end of the program, uh, the general conclusion was that um, the low GWP refrigerants do exist, but there is a caveat, and many of these low GWP refrigerants are classified as, um, as ones having a lower flammability. So uh, this creates an extra layer that manufacturers have to uh, have to deal with when designing the next generation products. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the, the main uh, takeaway. Okay, and so how did AHRI then approach this issue of the, uh, the flammability of, of these low GWP 
refrigerant? How, how have we addressed that and what are we doing now? Yeah, so, uh, so the industry uh, uh, has uh, spent a tremendous resource to, uh, to understand and, and address the low GWP refrigerant flammability issues. So um, um, uh, we conducted uh, tons of uh, research. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of background. So in order to use those flammable refrigerants uh, in the field, relevant safety standard and code uh, must be updated. So they, they, they set necessary requirements to make sure the products using these refrigerants are safe. Right, and the standard revision and the code adoption uh, require uh, scientific and the technical uh, evidence to support whatever the, 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 the change necessary. And so about five years ago, uh, we launched a research program and to, to generate publicly available technical data to support standard and code uh, revisions related to the use of flammable refrigerants. Um, uh, this uh, six million dollars plus uh, uh, research program was actually jointly funded by uh, by the industry, by HRI, by ASHRAE, and uh, California Air Resources Board, and uh, the U.S. Department of Energy. So uh, you can see we spend a, a lot of resources to uh, to understand the issues and. Uh, so we have completed many projects and to understand the, uh, the potential risk and the means to mitigate them. And uh, we have learned, you know, the conditions um, uh, that could potentially cause uh, some ignition event and, uh, and, and, and how to uh, mitigate this uh, risk. So uh, these lessons learned helped our industry and the safety standard bodies to, uh, to set the proper requirements uh, to prevent these things uh, uh, from happening in the first place. So, uh, so this is what we have done, but now we're, uh, what we're doing, uh, you know, we're doing research on uh, optimum uh, mitigation and a re refrigerant sensor technologies. So moving forward, the codes and the, and the standards will require the use of the refrigerant uh, uh, sensors. To uh, to detect refrigerant leaks, um, to mitigate you know the potential of flammability risk, um, but but you know we are taking a very conservative approach to update the safety standards, but we also don't want them to be overly stringent beyond what is necessary. So uh, that would increase a uh, uh, necessary burden. Uh, so. Uh, we studied the different uh, uh, sensor technologies and conclu basically concluded that uh, there are viable uh, uh, sensor technologies uh, that could safeguard the products and using flammable refrigerants. Uh, but we need a way to consistently evaluate uh, the different types of uh, sensor technologies to make sure uh, they would function as intended to over uh, various uh, uh, conditions and over a long period of time. So that's what we're uh, focusing on right now. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you for that overview. Always um, one of the best people to talk to at HRI to have technical concepts explained in regular English. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope uh, it's not so uh, technical, uh, uh, you, you know, in terms of the content, I'll try to uh, make the in the plain English and uh, yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're and, welcome. And our research, um, the reports on those research programs are available on HRI's website. That is correct. Our uh, uh, research reports uh, are published at the HRI website. Uh, you can uh, go to HRI website and click uh, resources, and then research. And then you will uh, then click the final report. You will find it, uh, find all of the uh, excited, uh, exciting uh, uh, stuff uh, on the HR website. Thank you, Zidane. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, bye.